I grew up in San Juan Rizal. We lived very close to the historic Pinaglabanan Church. In fact, it was my father's lolo who built the church. After graduating high school, I was valedictorian. I went straight to UP Diliman to study AB Psychology. I went on to Ateneo for masteral units. I didn't finish my master's, but I did get a job as a psychometrician. It wasn't It wasn't fulfilling at all. My father asked me if I wanted to travel, and I did. So we went on a pilgrimage, a Holy Roman Catholic pilgrimage to all the holy sites in Europe. That was my exposure to Michelangelo, eventually Van Gogh in Amsterdam. I knew it was sculpture for me. So, palik tayo sa UP. I was a late student. I was older than some of my teachers. I taught Plaster of Paris, which eventually became my chosen medium. Most of what I do is live casting. You put gauze bandage. When you take that out, you have a negative mold of your face. So I did that for my body. I realized I chose a very spontaneous way of working because plaster, if you leave it for too long, hardens on you. Titigasan ka, you have to work fast. You drop all those months of research, intellectual stuff, feeding yourself with images, mythology, philosophies, religion, and you let the visual and the tactile nature of what you're doing take over your energy. The ultimate oblivion. It's an altered state of consciousness. This led to me making Inscapes. Inscapes is an installation of different, disparate, distinct sculptures in one environment. The way we usually perceive sculpture is to go around the object, to see it 360 degrees. In an inscape, you change your perception because you're surrounded by these elements. They are different from each other, but if you just stalled everything in your mind, you get the message. Six students of Professor Chabet were invited to show at the Museum of Philippine Art. Two big, beautiful spaces were given to him by Arturo Luz, but instead of taking it for himself, he gave it to six of his students. I was the only female and the only sculptor. My first challenge, <laughs> first time I delved into this, it was based on a myth from Bicol about the moon goddess coming down to earth periodically to bathe in our warm waters. This was the ancient explanation for menstruation, period. The Inscape was based on research on archaeology, mythology, religions, history too. I figured nature comes in cycles. If we are now praying to a god, the father, we must have been praying to a mother goddess at some point. It was a very important award. First, it recognized the body of work we had already done previous to being awarded. No? And one of the criteria was being experimental, out of the box, innovative. I had experimented with different materials. For example, I enclosed in a clear glass box an ant colony. But I made all the labyrinths, the, the little places where the ants would crawl. The viewer could watch everything from outside. The, the ants would dig into the soil and you could see them from the glass. And then I filled up some multicolored condoms with water and I hung them with string onto the ceiling of the waiting shed for the jeepney in UP, UP Ikot. So you could see the girls think, holy, they're like jewels. The sun was shining through them. <laughs> that was fun. There were other materials that I had experimented on before TAA. It was a big inspiration. It was a reassurance telling me that I was on the right track. It gave me international exposure. 
it was in fact acquired by the Fukuoka Art Museum. The work that I exhibited here is a cover of the book, The Carcass Cornucopia Paradox. Carcass Cornucopia. It's an upended female with hooves hanging from slaughterhouse hooks, and her belly is slashed. The venerable head of the CCP came up to me and said, Agnes, I can't bear to look at your sculpture. Oh, she went like this. I thought maybe it was the pain of being slashed open. But I failed to tell her, but if you had just come a little closer, you would have seen the little bulol, lordling, waiting inside. And the bounty of the universe bursting out of this slashed abdomen. Because of this fear, she could not see the beauty. I kept using my body and eventually I realized I was using it for therapy, for the traumas that I was experiencing in my life. Every time I'd have a milestone, I would actually record it in this other body of mine. It gave me a step back so that I could see the situation more clearly. We were told in school, you mustn't use art for therapy. But I have to confess, I used it. It became how I would heal myself. Viewers now seem to be much more accepting. In my case, it's always a nude body. They're less shocked than they used to be. <laughs> When I look at people reacting. Of course, I was the only female in the six, among the six artists. The females are really in a minority because the, the majority of us are mothers. I didn't feel discriminated against. Yeah, except I needed to change my religion. I wasn't feeling at all warm or welcome with the way God was presented to me in my childhood. When, when you lose your virginity, it's a dead end if you're in the Catholic faith. So I said, am I going to despair? Despair just because I'm no longer a virgin? There must be some deity who will still welcome me, who will be forgiving, who will be understanding, who will be compassionate. But in my mind, the whole society, at least all the males would already look at me as a tarnished person. I had to look for an alternative deity, someone that I could feel close to. Maybe because We're the same sex, a mother goddess. She has many, many forms in many different religions and many mythologies. Buddhism didn't even allow nuns in the beginning. By making Deya as part of Tatlong Budang Ina, I was also saying women can be Buddhas. There are so many people who get offended by my art. The nudity alone already cuts off a lot of people. And the open sexuality that I express, it's quite a challenge. I faced censure, for example, in one of the exhibits at a Catholic boys' school. The brother couldn't take it. That was bringing all their legs played. Another challenge was finding a gallery to exhibit in. I was with Mulawin Abueva, Canadian called Car Carol Wally. Jack Taylor, Juan Moro, and myself. We'd gone around, but we were turned down by all the galleries because they only wanted to show mainstream art. In fact, I was told by one of the senior curators, why don't you just concentrate on the work of your Lolo Juan? Juan Arellano, the architect, who is not known as a painter. His works are underrated, she's saying. We found a way to show in another venue and we got a good review from Alice Guillermo. And eventually, I founded Pinaglabanan Galleries. We had five seasons of cutting-edge art. Our first director was Bobby Chabet. That set the spirit of, of the gallery. Pinaglabanan. Malaban. <laughs> so we allowed all kinds of expression. As long as we could replace and repair, we allowed Love it. There's also a challenge you face when you have cast your own body. Some kind of paranoia, maybe. But you certainly get the blues after opening 
because you have exposed yourself so much. People will ask, is that you? You have to be extra brave, not to be intimidated. Now, even now, I still feel that I'm too exposed when I'm showing one of my new goddesses, but that's okay. I was at an exhibit recently, a new gallery called Imahika, and it's an exhibit for Women's Month. There were so many young artists. It was so refreshing to see their art. Keep on doing it. Be brave. Don't get intimidated. 